tau overflows krishna murti and the spirit of self confidence and independence the self belief that krishna murti felt himself sowed the seeds of self confidence and independence that manifested in myriad ways in later part of his life whatever happened during this time his training had not prepared him for that it seems as if a burden was lifted from his conscience and he took his first step towards becoming an individual since the initial occurrences in 1922 several explanations have been proposed for this experience that krishna murti had Lead Beater and other theosophists expected the vehicle to have some paranormal experiences, but were nevertheless mystified by these developments that happened in Krishna Murti. During Krishna Murti's later years, the nature and providence of the continuing process often came up as a subject of private discussion. between himself and his close associates all these discussions shed some shed some light on the subject but were ultimately inconclusive whatever the case the process and the inability of lead beater to explain it satisfactorily if at all had other consequences according to the biographer rosalind vernon the process as was i whatever its cause or validity was an important milestone for krishna murti up until this time his spiritual progress checkered through it might have been planned with solemn deliberations by the societies the theosophical societies grandees something new had now occurred for which krishna murti's training had not entirely prepared him a burden was lifted from his conscience and he took his first step towards becoming an individual in terms of his future role as a teacher the process was his important bedrock it had come to him alone and had not been planted in him by his mentors it provided krishna murti with the soil in which his new found spirit of confidence and independence could take deep roots as the news of this mis- these mystical experiences is spread rumors concerning the messianic status of krishna murti reached high pitch as 1925 theosophical society's convention was planned on the 50th anniversary of its founding these were the expectations there were expectations of significant happenings paralleling the increasing adulation was krishna murti's growing discomfort with it he did not like this kind of adulation that was planned for him in related developments prominent theosophists and their factions within the society were trying to position themselves favorably relating relative to the coming which that too much in fact everything is bad extraordinary pronouncements of spiritual advancements were made by diff- by various parties and factions while it was disputed by others and the internal theosophical politics further alienated krishna murti everybody was trying to emphasize certain things that this will happen this is how he will behave or interact but all these 
created conflict within the society and helped this politics help Krishna Murthy further to alienate from this main part of this theosophical society. Nityanand, on the other hand, con his health continued to deteriorate and he had periodically resurfaced throughout this time. On 13th of November 1925, at the age of 27, Nityanand died at Ozai from complications of influenza and tuberculosis. Despite Nitya's poor health, his death was unexpected and it fundamentally shook Krishnamurti's belief in theosophy and the leaders of the theosophical society. He had received their assurances regarding Nitya's health and had come to believe that Nitya was essential for this and therefore he would not be allowed to die. A belief shared by Anibesant and Krishnamurti's inner circle. The biographer Jayakar wrote that this belief in the masters and the hierarchy has undergone a total revolution. Moreover, Nitya had been the last surviving link to his family and childhood, the only person to whom he could talk openly. His best friend and companion was Nityanand. According to eyewitness accounts, the news broke him completely, but 12 days after Nitya's death, he was immensely quiet radiant and free of all sentiments and emotions. There was not a single shadow to show what he had been through. This brought break from the past. Over the next few years, Krishnamurti's new vision and consciousness continued to develop. New concepts appeared in his talks, discussions, and correspondences. Together with an evolving vocabulary that was progressively free of the theosophical terminology, his new direction reached the climax in 1929 when he rebuffed attempts by Lead Beater and Anibescent to continue with the Order of the Star of the East, OSC. Krishnamurti dissolved the order during the annual star camp in Netherlands on 3rd of August 1929. He stated that he had made his decision after careful consideration during the previous two years and that I maintained that truth is a pathless land and you cannot approach it by any path whatsoever, by any religion, by any sect. That is my point of view and I adhere to that absolutely and unconditionally truth being limited, truth being limitless, unconditioned and unapproachable by any path whatsoever, cannot be organized nor should any organization be formed to lead or course people along a particular path. He was very clear that truth is a pathless land and it cannot be put into the limited boundaries. This is no magnificent deed because I do not want followers and I mean this. The moment you follow someone, you cease to follow truth. I cannot 
I am not concerned whether you pay attention to what I say or not. I want to do a certain thing in the world and I am going to do it with unwavering concentration. I am concerning myself with only one thing, set man free. This was the outcome that he felt for the first time in the individual and felt and the roots of independence and freedom went deep in him. I desire to be free from all caps, from all fears and not to found religions, new sects, nor to establish new theories and new philosophies. This is an important milestone in the life of Krishnamurti that continued for the rest of his life as a teacher, as a philosopher, as a master. I repeat this uh, after careful consideration during the past two years he wrote that, he said, I maintain that truth is a pathless land and you cannot approach it by any path whatsoever, by any religion, by any sect. That is my point of view and I adhere to that absolutely and unconditionally. Truth being limitless unconditioned and unapproachable by any path whatsoever, cannot be organized nor should any organization be formed to lead a course people along a particular path that my path is the only path and the best path. There are many roads that lead to the ultimate to the truth, whichever appeals to you, follow that. This is no magnificent deed because I do not want followers and I mean this. The moment you follow someone, you cease to follow truth. Learn from em everyone, allow this to grow deep within you and allow it to blossom out of you. Whatsoever you are gathering from different sources, different paths, get, allow this to grow deep within you and from there something that will evolve which will be totally yours. I am not concerned whether you pay attention to what I say or not. I want to do a certain thing in the world and I am going to do it with unwavering concentration. I am concerning myself with only one essential thing to set man free. This is the only role that a master does. In the beginning he gives you, creates an environment around you so that in that environment your natural talent, the seed starts blossoming into you and when it blossoms, its light and fragrance will spread all around. This is the greatest the work that can in, an individual can do. I desire to be free him from all cages, from all fears and not found religions, not new sex, nor to establish any theories or new philosophies. This was the way that Krishnamurti continued for the rest of his life. Enough for now.